So we are going to talk up, uh, talk about uh, polynomials today, right? And uh, let's begin. So the first thing, as we have been doing, so what is what has been removed from polynomials? So this has been removed from polynomials. So there is uh, statement and simple problems on division algorithms for polynomials with real coefficient has been removed. That is important in terms of the knowledge of function and algebraic function speci specifically. So hence, um, I will definitely share that statement and at least the theory part. We'll not do problems, but you must be aware what division algorithm for polynomials is right so this has been removed so there will not be any question of finding coefficient if a particular polynomial fx is divisible by some other polynomial gx and this is the quotient qx and this is the remainder rx and hence find out the polynomial that kind of uh, that kind of questions have been taken away okay so that will not be there in the board okay but very very important as far as the concept of polynomials and functions is concerned Okay, guys. So again, a review of uh, the structure. So this should be very, very clear again. So hence, I in every this thing, every um, slide, I am or every PPT, I'm making sure that this is there in your mind every time. Okay. So what is it? So we will not repeat everything now. So you know there are two parts, A and B, and 36 and uh, 44. These are the two part marks. So 36 marks is only one marker. So to say, and in polynomial chapter, there is one case study question in the sample paper. So um, polynomial chapter will be important, right? So maybe that in the sample, uh, in the actual paper, there might not be a case study on polynomials, but in the name of case study, they have just given some diagrams, but otherwise the basic knowledge of polynomials will be good enough to solve the questions. You'll see later when we discuss that. So hence, don't worry about that. Okay, so case study questions in my point of view, what they have done is they have just tried to make a story around it. And the questions are all, whether it is linked to that or not, you know, uh, irrespective of that you will be able to solve it. So you must be aware of the fundamentals. That's it. Okay. Now, as we uh, have been discussing, so there are 36, so 16 into one. So you know that break up now. Vibhav is joining and then leaving, joining and leaving. What is happening, Vibhav? Are you there? So lot lot many times I have to admit him. Okay. Okay. Now, so let's begin. So what I'm saying is uh, 16 into one, you now remember then four case studies each with five questions, but you will be given four marks only. So this is 16 plus 16, 32. Okay. And then we have, uh, Six into two mark, 12, seven into three mark, 21, and five into three, five marks into three. So we write as three into five marks. This is 15. So this is the breakup. Total is 44, sorry, 48. Right? Yeah, 48 and 32. This is total 80. Okay, so let's go to the definition of polynomial. So this is the polynomial definition. What's polynomial definition? So let X be a variable. Now this is polynomial in only one variable. Polynomial could be in multiple variables. So now what we are, I'm going to do at least in mathematics is, I'll give you some brief idea of whatever, what is going to be later as well. So hence now we are talking only about one variable. Uh, there will be polynomials with multiple variables as well. So here, the typical way of representing polynomial is this. And uh, here is where these kind of statements are not very, you know, so people are uncomfortable seeing these kind of statements, but you have to now get accustomed to such things. Now, polynomial in X can be represented by F and within brackets X. Now, this F is for function later on, you are going to see. So the polynomial is nothing but there's a word function hidden all the time, which because of your, uh, let's say lesser maturity in mathematical knowledge. So we have been avoiding this word, but it's actually a polynomial function in X. So the variable is X and you can see these are the real numbers. So we are now talking about only real valued polynomial or an X also would be 
the variable x will also represent a real number only okay so this n has to be a non negative integer right so you can't have a negative integer here either n can be 0 or more than 1 more than 0 but n cannot be 1.5 root 2 or negative 1 or negative 1.5 no so that's the you know uh, the speciality of polynomials every other thing is called algebraic expression so there was a question in board also so where they are give they are giving and we'll see that question later on so there are, sorry what is this algebraic yeah algebraic algebraic functions or expressions now the word expression will get changed into function the moment we go into 11th grade so algebraic functions or in your language algebraic expressions are all combinations of variables and coefficients irrespective of the power on the variable but if we are the polynomial function is a special class of algebraic function where the high the powers of the variable has to be constant non negative non negative constant integers or whole numbers you can see right so x to the power y is it a polynomial yes or no is x to the power y a polynomial yes or no what do you think guys x to the power y is a polynomial or not hey where is the answer what happened to you <clears throat> polynomial if y is a positive integer if y is positive integer so x to the power y is zero then it's not a polynomial that's what you're saying Aryan. so in this state it is not a polynomial because we do not know anything about y Okay, so y has to be a non-negative integer only then. Otherwise, I what did I tell you? Non-negative constant integers it has to be. So it, you the variable can, the power itself cannot be a variable. Okay, yes, you have to specify that y is a non-negative constant integer. Okay, so what about uh, x to the power uh, this y one upon x? Is this a polynomial? X square plus one upon x is a polynomial. Yes or no? Is this a polynomial function? It's not a polynomial function simply because uh, this power of x is negative here so not a polynomial function and uh, what about uh, let me say uh, this one oh sorry so many people are there x square x square into x minus 1 by x square is this a polynomial no, are in uh, whole numbers are again. So you know, so usually we deal with integers. Now uh, whole numbers are for again. No one, uh, no one talks about that. So whole numbers again. All these things have been to taught to you so that you can comprehend easily. But in the in the world of mathematics, no one talks about whole numbers. And, yeah, so they will talk in terms of integers. So positive integers, non-negative integers. So that there's one uniformity across when we are, yes, you know, those who understand whole numbers, you can definitely talk about that. But as I told you, conventionally, we are, conventionally we avoid using such terms here. So hence, we will talk about integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, complex numbers. Okay. Now, uh, so clearly you're saying x square, x minus one, of one upon x square is not a, is, is, is this a polynomial? Yes or no? So this is a polynomial, yes. So hence, you have to simplify first and then see whether something is polynomial or not, okay? So this is very much a polynomial, why? Because this is x cubed minus one. Fair enough. What is, what if x equals to zero? No, so hence, if x equals to zero, then you are specifying the value of the variable, then it is not, a, you know, anyway, so it's a constant polynomial, sadly. So whenever we have, we can have, you know, fx is equal to constant as well either fx equals to zero or fx equals to constant. So these are called constant polynomial or zero polynomial. Okay, so this is a zero polynomial. This is a constant polynomial. These are also there, right? One upon zero into zero is equal to zero. No, division by zero is not allowed. Okay, so oh, you are you're talking in this, this case, is it? Is this case, this particular case? No, is anyway simplified as x cubed, x cubed minus one, yeah? So, so first of all, simplify it. See, for that matter, anything can be written. For example, even five can be written as five into x by x. That doesn't mean we will avoid x equals to zero case, right? So let's say there is a polynomial y is equal to five. 
So someone can say, hey, I can write five into x by x. So hence x should not be zero, right? Right? You cannot say like that. So hence, um, you know, um, what I'm saying is you have to simplify and see, you know, what is the simplest form of expression will be taken as the polynomial. I hope I made myself clear. Okay, now, so let's go to, so this is clear to you, a n, a n minus one. So don't get confused by the subscripting part of it. This has to be now very, very thorough with all of you. We are going to use this multiple number of times, especially in now upcoming grade. Why is one upon zero into zero not equal to zero? Because one upon zero is not defined right here. So, you know, so you cannot multiply any not defined number with zero and say that it is zero. What are you multiplying with? So the multiplicands have to be defined before you multiply. You understand? Vigna. So you have to define. So multiplication is an operator operated upon two multiplicands, right? So the left hand side and right, right hand side of that multiply operator has to be defined first before the execution of the multiplication operation, right? So you can't really uh, operate on something which is not defined. Is that okay? Yeah. So let's go to, um, yeah. So this is polynomial in variable X. There are polynomial where, for example, later on in your 11th grade, you are now going to study about circles where you, you talk about these expressions. So X square plus Y square is equal to one. So this is a polynomial, right? Or this is equation by the way, but let's say I am, I am saying X square plus Y square minus one. Okay. So this is a polynomial in X and Y. Right, so there could be a polynomial in n number of variables later on, and and we are in the realm of algebra. So only thing you have to make sure is that power should be non-negative integers. That's it. Okay, let's go to this. Degree of a polynomial is an important concept. You are going to deal with this again and again in calculus or algebra later on. So it must be very very thorough. Exponent of the highest degree term in a polynomial is known as its degree. Highest degree. Term. So any polynomial will be made up of several terms. You have to identify though that term which has highest possible degree, right? So in one variable, it is typically very easy to find out. Why? Because you can just see which number is the largest and pick that one up. And you can say that's the degree. But let's say for a multiple variable, we'll see that as well, though that is not there in your syllabus directly. So a polynomial of degree zero is called a constant polynomial, right? So for example, y is equal to seven is a constant polynomial, why? Because it can always be written as x to the power zero. So there is no, so this is called a constant, constant polynomial. And what is the degree? Degree is zero. Degree is zero. But the point to be taken care of here is y is equal to fx is equal to zero is a constant polynomial, but its degree is not defined. Its degree is not defined. I hope everybody is aware of this. So a zero polynomial doesn't have a degree defined, okay? Now a polynomial of degree one, two, three is called linear. And then what? Um, linear, quadratic, cubic, biquadratic, quintic, so on and so forth. Naming again is not that important. You must just be aware of what exactly is happening. Fair enough. Any any confusion, any questions so far? Sir, I had a doubt in a question related to polynomials. Yes. Who is this? Who's speaking? Sir, Meghna. Yeah, Meghna, tell me. Sir, I send it to you personally. Okay, on WhatsApp? Yes, sir. Okay, I will take that up. Wait, wait. we'll finish this and then we'll take it up, okay? I didn't get it, but... Wait, oh. Sir, we I send it to you. with five zero or something, no? I didn't get it. Maybe it is in the cyberspace. Well, no, I sent it to you last Saturday, actually. Oh my God. What, uh, your number ends with? 2076 what? Number ends with? No, wait, wait one second, one second. <laughs> you forgot your own number, is it? Oh, no. 056, it, end, it ends with 05. 056, okay, it happens, never mind. So, yeah, I got it. Um, what is it? Oh, there is, a, there is some figure and all that. Okay, we'll take it up as we discuss, no problem. It represents a what polynomial? Okay, so there is a curve which is not that clear. Okay, this appears, is it going down the x-axis also? I, I can't see it. It appears to be a cubic polynomial in this case. There are two. two... No, but it's not visible at how many points it's touching the x-axis, right? See, it need not be, see. Uh, 
uh, I'll tell you another way of looking at it is how many turns the curve is taking. So usually, if there are two turns the curve is taking and uh, x tending to infinity is negative is negative infinity x tending to I will show you it in this thing. Just to give me two minutes, I'll show you in GeoGebra. Yeah, okay. all right, sir. I'll express it. Don't worry. I'll I'll tell you what how to deal with such problems also. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so let's move ahead. So what uh, Meghna is asking, I'll just take that question. So here is that you know. So let me just take it. Keep. Okay. So here is what she is trying to understand. There go. So let me define a. Let's take first uh, four variables A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now let me define. All of you are able to see this, right? This uh, this graph is visible to you, all of you. Confirm. Yeah. So let us say we have um, this this curve A x to the power three plus. Megan, I think this is exactly the figure which they have given to you, isn't it? Yes, sir. This see, is can you see that? So this is what I was saying. Anyway, I let me complete this and I'll come to this. Uh, Ax cube, uh, plus bx to the power two, plus plus cx. I am taking a cubic. There you go. Right. It is touching how many times? Only once. But can you see there is two turn in the graph? Now what they had given you is this. Let me convert it to zero. This one. Let me convert this also to zero. This one, and this also to zero. This is what they have given you. So now it it has only one root because it is touching the x-axis at exactly at one point. That doesn't mean that it is it cannot be a cubic one. See, uh, the thing is, any this is a this is called fundamental theorem of algebra. So any polynomial of degree n will have three roots. It has to have three roots. Whether it is real or complex, that's a secondary issue. But any any polynomial of degree n will have how many roots? N roots. It has to have. So in this case, this particular curve is having. This is a cubic expression, definitely, because as you can see in the expression itself. So here there are one real root and two imaginary roots. So the uh, you know uh, the way we had in quadratic two imaginary roots. Similarly, in this case, there are two imaginary and one real root, and one real root is zero. It's equal to zero. You can see that. So, how to decide which, whether it is, you know, irrespective of the fact whether the polynomial or the curve is cutting the x-axis or not, see the number of turns, how many, how many times it is swinging. So, hence here, it takes, it goes up, becomes zero. So, this is one turn, and then again second turn. Okay. So, a cube a n degree, n degree, uh, this thing, you know. Um, Polynomial will have n minus one turns at max. So by the appearance and the shape of the curve itself, you can see. See, so this is a polynomial of degree. Uh, now, if I change d, now here is what you would have got: three roots, three real roots. Here only one, right? So either it will have three roots, or it will have three real roots, or one real roots. The other two will become imaginary. So can you see that? So this is how this is what it is given. So hence by just by let's say if this this particular thing is given to you uh, this one. So if you don't know this curve, can you predict which kind of a polynomial is this? Is this? This is a cubic polynomial. Do you do you get the point? Irrespective of the fact that it is not cutting the x-axis twice. Always remember it is the maximum number of roots is the number of or it's equal to the degree. It need not be all the time. Is that understood, Megna? No, sir. I'm not getting it. So what I'm saying is, once again, let's say a degree three polynomial. How many roots it it should have? Three. What type of roots? Real. Not necessary. That's what I'm saying. Understood. So if there is a degree okay. three poly, acha, let me reduce it to degree two. For a degree two polynomial, that is a quadratic polynomial, how many zeros will there be? For a for a for a quadratic polynomial, how many zeros do you expect? Hey, come on. How many zeros are in two, right? At most two. Very good, Surya. At most two. When you say at most two, here is where the difference between 10th and 11th grade lines. Now, every polynomial will have roots, right? A quadratic polynomial will have two zeros 
ऑलवेज अंडरस्टूड ऑलवेज हाँ एट मोस्ट टू रियल रूट इज द राइट आंसर डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू रियल रूट possible you will say at max 2 right understood yes sir this is what so let's say now this is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d i should not be saying the roots i should be saying zeros it's a polynomial so zeros now tell me for this cubic how many zeros possible zeros possible Three zeros. Zeros. Possibly. There always be three zeros. There has to be. No one can deny the right to this cubic polynomial of having three zeros. It, yes. What nature of roots will be? That's a uh, zero will be. That's something. Something yet you know another another fact another thing to be discussed. So three zeros are there. Now in a cubic or uh, and and the other important thing you will be learning in now you know theory of equations and other things later on. that if all the coefficients are real a b c d if all are real then this can have even number of complex roots right even number meaning there cannot be one complex root and two real roots no it has to be two complex and one so what are the combination of root? all three real this is one all three real roots what is the example of this this is the example which one let me show you so in this case here can you see how many times it is cutting the x axis thrice thrice so this is this one this one and this one these three are real roots okay but if i change the polynomial by increasing the value of d the coefficient the constant term let's say now how many times it is intersecting the x axis just once just one where is the b and c gone it has become imaginary understood so the imaginary roots are always in pair can you see right yes, now yes sir yes sir got it always in pair so b and c together disappear it's not that it has a and b and c disappears no together two roots will disappear right so all three real roots this is one combination second combination will be one real and two complex okay this will Study now. The, you are now getting, you know, the initiation into this all. You will be studying all of this now. So one real and two complex. It will never have this two real and one complex. Never possible. This is what is fundamental law of algebra. This is the first thing you are going to study in algebra the moment you enter grade grade eleven. Basic thing. Okay. Oh, so me. can you so can you explain why it can't have two real and one complex? See, complex roots have to be uh, again. You have to go to, into the proof of this, Aryan. See, whenever there are rational coefficients, or ra you know, real coefficients, forget about rational. So, hence, in that case, you will the the roots, the com the the roots which are there. If at all there is a complex root, it are it will occur in conjugate pair. So, for example, if two plus three i is a root, two minus three i will also be a root. it has to be because you will see again you know uh, when we go into the proof of it it will say take some time but this is you will come out as an as an outcome it will come if the coefficients are real the complex roots will have to be in pairs is that understood so hence if if there is one possibility of complex root then it has to be a you know the other root has to be a for example do you remember if let's say if all these coefficients in your ninth grade we studied all all of these are rational coefficients then if there is a irrational root it will appear in pairs for example 2 minus root 3 is one root then 2 plus root 3 will also be a root of the same thing these are called conjugate roots right so hence you will never see only one if the coefficients are rational then you will never see one irrational root it has to be in pair similarly if the coefficients are real you will never see one complex root it has to be in pair so if the complex roots are pair 
then out of three, two are either zero complex root or two complex roots will be there. So only one is left for being real, right? Similarly, let's say there the degree is five. How many real roots possible? Five real, zero complex. Then can this be four real, one complex? Not possible. Then we have three real plus two complex possible. Four real and one complex, not possible. Five real and, sorry, this is, sorry, pull down. Two real and uh, three complex, not possible. One real and four complex, possible. Did you get the point? And geometrically speaking also, see, when this curve, see, what, what is the zero of a polynomial when the polynomial cuts the x-axis? Now there is a natural curve, right? It is turning like this. Now, when it lifts up from the x-axis, exactly two points disappear. Do you get the point? Are you able to follow what I'm saying? Uh, so, yes, sir. But what if it just touches the x-axis, like in quadratic, uh, sir, when there was only point B? Uh, like, there are two, two equal real roots and one not equal real root. Understood? You are talking about this case, correct? Yes, sir. Now, here, case. B and C are coincident. It doesn't mean that the roots have been disappeared or that the roots have disappeared. The B and C are sitting on top of each other. It's like when we say X minus two whole square is zero. How many roots are there? Uh, two equal roots. Two equal roots. So here also what is happening? Out of three real roots, two are equal. And one is on e one is different from those two equal. Understood? Yes, sir. But here also there are three roots. Never ever it will happen that one root is, you know, disappearing totally. You understood? Yes, sir. So this will be the game. So hence, either one or three real roots, or five real roots, or seven real roots, if the powers are odd like that. Understood? The degree is odd rather. Sir, but with the concept that we've been taught, like if we look at it for the first time, we see that it in intersects the x-axis at two points. That will degree. give you the, see, that will, achha, what if I have this, tell me, Deco, man lo, in the board paper or any paper for that matter, you have this equation, this curve, this one. How many roots are there? Oh, uh, sorry. The question is what kind of a curve it is? What kind of polynomial it is? Is it linear? No. Certainly not because it doesn't appear to be a line. Right? So that means it is a polynomial polynomial of higher degree. Yes. More than one. Right? Can it be three? I'm Can this be three? Sure. It will never be three. Why? Because a polynomial of degree three will have at least one real root. See, we just proved. At least one real root has to be there. Understood? Yes or no? You you tell me. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, no three complex roots. It has to be, a, 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 if it is a polynomial of degree three, it will cut the x-axis come what may, at least once. Got it? Okay, okay sir. Got it. Yes, any odd, for example, if it is line, let's say, until it is parallel to x-axis, if a line is like this, y is equal to x plus one, how many roots are there or how many zeros are there for this? At least one is definitely there. X equals to minus one, isn't it? Yes. So any, always remember any polynomial of odd degree will cut the X axis at least once. For all odd degree, I'm telling you three, five, seven, nine, eleven, all of these polynomials will cut the axis, X axis at least once. If a degree four is there, you can't say why? Because the polynomial could be of this shape, something like that, W shaped. So it is not cutting the x-axis at all. So come back to this and so we can say polynomial of degree n will have n minus one turns. Yes, they, they will have n minus one turn uh, for any n degree, right? So let's say for, for cubic quadratic, it has to be one turn for cubic, it has to be two turns for bi quadratic, it has to be three turns and things like that. Okay, so let's move on. So now, degree of polynomial is clear. This is our table to understand to give you the, the brief of what is constant, what is linear, quadratic, cubic, bi quadratic. Okay, no explanation required here. Degree four, degree three, degree two, degree one, degree zero. Right now, let's go to value of a polynomial. What is the value of a polynomial? So many questions on this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so if fx is a polynomial and alpha is any real number, then the real number obtained by replacing x by alpha in fx is known as 
the value of fx at x equals to alpha and it is denoted by f alpha so hence so you have to just replace uh the variable by the value and calculate the you know it's like a, a try or treat it like a formula and then try to calculate the value you will get the value of the polynomial clear okay so you have been doing such kind of problems before also okay let's move on hmm now a real number alpha is a zero of a polynomial fx if f alpha is equal to zero example if fx is 2x square minus 5x plus 2 then x equals to 2 and x equals to half are the zeros of fx and f2 is equal to zero and f half is also zero so what is zero so always remember there is a mistake people do that they think that the number value itself becomes zero no so what is this x equals to 2 and x equals to half are the zeros of fx 2 and half are not zeros themselves so please be careful about this so zero is a value of the variable which reduces the polynomial to zero okay and a polynomial of degree n can have at most n real zeros you can see i have written n real zeros so it can have n zeros it is definitely having n zeros but real as far as real zeros are concerned n real zeros are there next now this is what we are talking about and this was a question in your board as well geometrically the zeros of a polynomial fx are the x coordinates of the points where the graph y is equal to fx intersects the x axis right but that doesn't mean that if it is not intersecting it will not have zero it will definitely have zero whether it is real or not that depends on whether the graph actually physically cuts the x axis or not so here we can see this is right okay now in the adjoining graph points a b and c are the zeros of the polynomial this one so i can i have shown this this polynomial and there are a b and c three values where they are intersecting so three real zeros in this case now these are important the questions will be based on this sum and product of zeros so if there is a polynomial quadratic ax square plus bx plus c sum of zeros will be alpha plus beta which is negative of coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x squared and product of zeros is alpha beta c by a constant term divided by coefficient of x squared so always remember for the sum there is a negative sign and uh, for the product there is no negative sign right so minus b by a and in the when you are ca calculating b the b will have the sign of you know its original sign for example if you are having x square minus 2x plus 3 then b is minus 2 not simply 2 so here lots of people make mistakes so keep keep that in mind so here alpha plus beta will be equal to 2 simply and alpha beta is equal to 3 in this case right similarly for bi quadratic uh, sorry cubic so there are three things here alpha plus beta plus gamma minus b by a which is coefficient of x square divided by coefficient of x cube and negative sign then again positive c by a but this time around we say that sum of the two roots taken at two at a time so sum of the roots taken two at a time alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x cube And product alpha beta gamma is minus d by a constant term divided by coefficient of x cube. Is that okay? So this is what is the theory part of it. Unfortunately, this is removed, but you must know this that f x is equal to g x into q x plus r x. It is similar to uh, what our Euclid's division lemma. So Euclid's division lemma was on uh, integers. Here we are talking about polynomials, right? now what are these what are these fx equals gx plus gx into qx plus rx where the degree of qx will be less than degree of fx for sure and degree of rx is definitely either zero or less than gx the divisor but this has been taken away from your curriculum the problems will not be from this so now let's enter into this game So start solving. Tell me what will be the sum of the zeros of the quadratic polynomial three x square minus k x plus six. Oh, sorry, it's given. Find the value of k. Sum of zeros is given. Find the value of k. Now let's apply and start solving. Yeah, guys, you're there. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Quick.
okay good so some of the zeros of the quadratic polynomial uh what is some of the zeros alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a so minus of minus k by 3 right it is given as 3 so k clearly is equal to 9 good this one find a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are 5 minus 3 root 2 and 5 plus 3 root 2 okay so any quadratic polynomial i will give you the basics first so if you see the quad any quadratic polynomial will be x square minus sum of zeros times x plus product of zero is equal to sorry this is sorry this if you have to write the equation this will be the equation otherwise this is the polynomial X square minus ten x plus seven, right? So sum of zeros. So x square minus sum of zeros. What is this? Five minus three root two plus five plus three root two x and plus product of zeros. So five minus three root two into five plus three root two, right? So this is f x. Now there is a class of such uh, quadratic polynomial. If you multiply this with any constant, also you are getting going to get the same zeros. So this is x square minus 10x. Okay, and what is this? 5 square minus 18. So 25 minus 18. So this is x square minus. This is one mark. Oh, sorry. This is two marks. Yeah. This is in sample paper. Next, this is the uh, what is that? The case study problem. So here is a you can see the photograph. Application of parabolas, highways, overpasses, underpasses. A highway underpass is parabolic in shape. Okay. Now shape of cross. So this is just a you know lots of information given. Whether it is useful or not, you will see yourself. See, a parabola is in the graph that results from p x is equal to a x square plus b x plus c. Parabolas are symmetric about a vertical line known as axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry runs to the maximum or minimum point of the parabola, which is called the where vertex. It's called the what? I think this is the word. Okay, now so this is how it appears. So this is where a is greater than zero. This is where a is less than zero. right so you know that in the highway overpass is represented by x square minus 2x minus 1 8 then its zeros are find the zeros simple find the zeros find the zeros so a 4 and minus 2 right so many people are saying 4 and minus 2 very good so you can find the zero directly and you know uh Since it is an MCQ, you can pick this one directly. Why? Because four plus minus two, sum of the roots is minus two, and product of root is minus eight. So anyway, or you can solve it. How to solve? Split the middle term. So x square minus four x plus two x minus eight is equal to zero. So x times x minus four plus two times x minus four is equal to zero. So x minus four times x plus two is equal to zero. So either x equals to four or x equals to minus two. Chali. Next, the highway overpass is represented graphically. Zeros of a polynomial can be expressed graphically. Number of zeros of polynomial is equal to number of points where the graph of polynomial. So this is very easy. Intersects the x-axis. So see, you know, irrespective of this diagram or not, if the diagram was not given, still you will be able to solve the question. So hence, in the case study-based questions, I don't know whether this is actual quality question. 
but uh, I don't see any relevance of the diagram here. Anyways, so let's go. You are not trying to find out anything from this diagram, so to say, in these two questions at least. Okay. Now, graph of a quadratic polynomial is a simple graph of a quadratic polynomial is a parabola. No problem in this, right? Representation of higher highway underpass whose one zero is six and sum of the zero is six, zero is zero. So representation of highway underpass whose one zero is six and the sum of zeros. So alpha plus beta is zero given and alpha is six, let's say. So six plus beta is equal to zero. So beta is equal to minus six. So hence, you know the, so it will be nothing but x square minus 36. Right? Good. Number of zeros of polynomial this can have is the number of zeros that polynomial this can have is. Now, this is a wrong question in my point of view. This is a wrong question. Why is it a wrong question? Ha, huh, but yes, options are there. Now this is a am little ambiguous in case of grade 10. Now you might get, you know, if they do not mean real zeros, right? So hence the number of real zeros is, so number of, in my opinion, when you write such kind of, uh, you know, uh, when you attempt such questions, if you are, finding some ambiguity, write that. So number of real zeros max at max two. Number of zeros always two. Right? So, so that you make your point clear. Okay. So since it is asking number of zeros, so it will always be two. But if it is real zeros, then zero is also, you know, oh, sorry, number of zeros that polynomial can have is, uh, oh, anyways, huh, sorry, this is not that, uh, yeah, this is, this is straightforward, not much of a problem is there. So number of zeros that polynomial can have is, yes, this is anyways clear. So they're not asking about real, or, even if it is not mentioned, that's fine. Is it clear to you? What I'm saying is, it is very much clear. The number of zeros that polynomial fx can have is two only. There is no ambiguity in this, sorry. Right. Depending upon whether it is real or not, you can have zero, one, or two roots. That's something else. Never mind. So you write two only. Good. So two. Okay. This is actual board paper 1920. One marker. Solve it. If one of the zeros of the quadratic polynomial is two, then the value of k is similar to you can see. Right. Uh, this this type of question you can predict now. There will be one question like like that. Minus 10 number, if one of the zeros of the quadratic polynomial is two, then the value of, so f, if fx is x square plus three x plus k, so f of two will be zero. So f of two is zero. So that means two square plus three into two plus k is equal to zero. That means four plus six. So K is equal to minus 10. B next. The quadratic polynomial, the sum of whose zeros is minus five and their product is six is. A, perfect. Okay. In doubt in this. So why? You can always do that x square plus, sorry, minus sum of roots or zeros, x plus product of zeros. Okay, so this is x square minus minus 5x plus 6 this x square plus 5x 
plus 6. Okay, next. Find a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are reciprocals of the zeros of polynomial. Now, this will take time. So, three marker, take time and solve. So, read the question carefully. What are the instructions and then do? And let me know the. When you're done, let me know. That's done. c x square plus b x plus 1. Now someone is saying a. a or 1? One. 1. Okay, why? Find a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are reciprocals of the zeros of the polynomial fx equals to this. So, uh, find a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are reciprocal. So, let us say that the zeros of fx is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. These zeros are alpha and beta. And you have to find out of this thing of 1 by alpha and 1 by beta. So basically your gx should be equal to x square minus 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta x plus 1 by alpha 1 by beta. Okay. This is what you are going to do. Okay. So this is nothing but uh, this is equal to x square minus alpha plus beta by alpha beta x plus 1 by alpha beta, right? Which is x square minus. What is alpha plus beta? Alpha plus beta is minus b. And what is alpha beta? Sorry, minus b by a. And this one is c by a plus 1 upon c by a. So c by a, isn't it? So hence, this will be something x square minus plus b by c. This is x also. So b by c plus a by c. So this means this is equal to cx square plus bx plus a. x is also there. Divide by c. Okay, so find a quadratic whose reciprocals are this. So... Yeah, so cx square plus bx plus a is also fine. No, you have to have this only. cx square plus bx plus a by c. Why is not c there in your case? Divide by c is not missing. Why is it missing? Guys, hello? Any any explanation? Those who are, why is c not there? Srijani or, yes, stress. Can you unmute and say why is C not there? Sir, I got the sum of zeros as minus B by C and the product of zeros as A by C. So either it can be X square plus B by CX plus A by C or C CX square plus BX plus A. Ha, so by, by C has to be also there. No, you missed, all of you missed this by C part. So I just wanted to understand why was that missing? Yes, RN, what happened? Sir, uh, what I did was I multiplied this with uh, C, the whole thing with C. Okay. So that cancelled off the uh, denominator for the second term and but, the third term. But why did you? Because there is a clear cut relation between the roots. Reciprocal roots are there. So if you miss out on C, maybe you are changing the, the root itself. You understand the point? Oh, okay, sir. So don't, don't miss out on C, guys. Hello? All of you understood? 
So yes. you would have you would have done alpha plus beta, which is minus b by a. That's fine. Then alpha beta, which is c by a. That's fine. Now you have to find out this. You no know, sum of reciprocals of the root the uh, polynomial whose zeros are reciprocals of the zeros. So the, the new zeros are one by alpha and one by beta. So hence alpha plus beta by alpha beta plus one by alpha beta. So hence I don't think you should be missing out on c. B minus plus B by yes, it has to be like that. Okay, take care of that. Yeah, next. Ah, uh, if four is a zero of the cubic polynomial, find its other other two zeros. Three marks, easy. <clears throat> Other zeros are two and okay. Let's see. Huh. Okay. Fair enough. So let's see. If four is the zero of the cubic polynomial x cube minus three x square minus ten x plus twenty four, that means f of four must be zero. Or uh, you can, you know, uh, divide by x minus four. So what did you do? Did you or you can go for alpha beta gamma thing? Whichever there are three, two three ways of doing it. So let's say alpha beta gamma are zeros. Okay. So what will be alpha plus beta plus gamma plus four? Let's say I'm taking alpha plus beta plus four is equal to three, right? And alpha beta plus four beta plus four alpha is equal to minus ten. And alpha beta into four is equal to what? Minus twenty four. Am I right? Minus plus minus. Yes. So like that, you get some equations here. So alpha beta uh, is equal to minus one from here, and from here you'll get alpha. Sorry, this is alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is equal to minus one. This you will get alpha beta is equal to minus six. Correct. Check if it is fine. So alpha plus beta is minus one. Alpha beta is equal to minus six. And from here. Yeah, so this will be redundant. So you can find out alpha minus beta from here. Alpha minus beta is equal to what is alpha minus beta? Under root alpha plus beta whole square and minus four alpha beta. Isn't it? So this is nothing but one and minus four into minus six. So under root five. So alpha minus beta could be plus minus five. Okay. So you add these two. So what will you get? Two alpha is equal to minus one. Or you, you can take either ways. Only the sign of alpha and beta will change. So you can take either plus five or minus five. Both ways you get the same answer. So two alpha minus one plus five is four. So alpha is two. And beta is equal to minus one and minus five. So minus six by two, minus three. Correct. So, did anyone deploy some other mechanism? You could have done one more thing. What? You but you know you could have divided by this. X cube minus three x square plus sorry minus ten x plus twenty four, right? And you would have found out the coefficient to be this. 
So you divided by x minus four, for whichever way. So you'll find this uh, x minus two and um, plus three. So x square plus x minus six will be the coefficient. Uh, sorry, the quotient, right? Did you get this quotient, Arun? So once you get this quotient, then you just split the middle term and find out the factors. You will get the zero. There are two ways. So either you go by division algorithm route or clear. Bolo. Yes or no? Clear? Any any difficulty? So there are two ways you can do. One is through the division algorithm route or through sum and product of roots route. Next. Again one marker. Zero of the polynomial x square minus three x minus m times n plus three r. So minus m zeros of the polynomial x square minus three x minus m m plus three r. You are saying b because sum of the root is minus three r. Yeah. So sum of root alpha plus beta. So let us say if the options are not given, then what will you use? Did you check the option and solve? How did you solve? Did you guys? Oh, op options only. If options were not not given, can you find the zeros of the polynomial? You can find the zeros of the polynomial. How? So x square minus three and m into n plus three is there anyways? So you can always you know split the middle term. So yeah. So it will. It has to be um what uh so I have minus now. So m plus three minus m x minus m m plus three. Right, so this is x square minus m x. I think so. No, m plus three x minus m plus three x, and then minus m x minus m m plus three. Right, so x common x minus m plus three, and here minus m common x. Oh wait, minus. X common, yeah. So why it is coming as minus then? Uh, x common, x minus m plus three and minus m common. Where, where, where? Oh, the second step, it's plus m x. In the second step, it is plus m x. Why? Because x, yeah, correct, correct. Sorry. Yeah. So m x minus m plus three. Done. So this is x minus m plus three. Times x plus m. So minus m and m plus three are the roots or the zeros. Chali. Good. Yeah, this one. Teacher asked ten of his students to write a polynomial in one variable on a paper and then to hand over the paper. A plus b and a b relation. Okay, yes. Surya done or oh, possible. So the following were the answers given by the students: two x plus three, three x square plus seven x plus two. So what is the question? How many of our ten are not polynomials? How many? How many are not polynomials? So not is the keyword. Now again, what they have done is, I think this is complete root three x and not root three times x. So treat it as root three x. Okay. So. So this is one, two, three. These are polynomials. This one is not. This one is four. This one is five. This one is not. This one is. This one is. This one is not. So three are not. How many of the above ten are quadratic polynomials? Quadratic. So this is one here. This is not. This is not. This is not. Only one. Yeah, one. Right. So this is three. One. 
good now now yeah, megna you will be getting curves graphs like this very very clear graphs so there will not be any ambiguity the number of zeros of polynomial is two clearly two what are the polynomials by the way uh, sorry what are the zeros so can you if they are ask if they ask you to find the factors so two factors can you can you give me two factors of this i'm saying factors i you did not notice uh, i said factor so the factors will be x plus 3 and x plus 1 right okay good hmm now be, do carefully again similar type of question which we have done but now please pay extra cautious caution find the value of k okay if the sum of the squares of zeros of the quadratic polynomial fx is 40 so squares of zero so alpha square plus beta square is 40 this is given what is alpha plus beta 8 what is alpha beta k so alpha square plus beta square you have to find out okay so if you square this alpha alpha plus beta whole square whole square is equal to 64 that is alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta Is equal to sixty-four. So alpha square plus beta square is forty. Plus two alpha beta is two k. Is equal to sixty-four. So two k is equal to twenty-four. So k is equal to twelve. Very good. Three marks. Right. This one. Again one mark. The number of zeros for a polynomial p x where graph y is equal to p x is given in figure. Is How many zeros are there? Four. Hmm. Now you got the point. This is this is where it is getting little. You know. uh so what finally answer you will write if such thing happen so since it is subjective paper you can still manage to write your assumption right so in this case since it is a you know you can see clearly this is a biquadratic by quadratic right why it is biquadratic same sign of two extremes both are negative and the curve is taking how many turns three turns 1 2 3 so it has to be a biquadratic curve if it is a polynomial so it is given that it is polynomial so it has to be a biquadratic polynomial so hence biquadratic polynomial will have either four real zeros or two real two complex or all four complex but here you can clearly see one real one real is there and the other is also touching here so there has to be four real roots so you can see you can say four real roots out of which two are equal this is a right explanation right this one
other zeros are okay did you go go through the division route hmm can you do it without division root anyone what do you think guys can can we do it without division root did anyone try without division root are tell me yaar yes or no anyone tried without division so yes definitely you can do the division part and solve it so you now know that so square of a quadratic polynomial not necessarily uh, see uh, it need not be a square all the time so fx is can i write like this two times which is the coefficient of highest coefficient and sum and product yes you can do that but there will be four equations for and all that so what i would have done is this can i write this as x minus root 3 x plus root 3 x minus alpha x minus beta what do you think am i right yes guys uh is this is this correct expression is this correct if yes then why if not then why not and why have i taken two here here why have i taken two can i not drop this two i cannot drop this two because the highest coefficient so hence if you see after multiplication of all 2x this x this x this x should be 2x to the power 4 hence i have to take that two so i have made sure that this is done and then whatever is the alpha beta that will be taken care of that's not a problem so this is what it is right now isn't it so either i can go for uh equating the coefficients so what is this if you look at it x square minus 3 and then x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta and if i expand this to this will be x to the power 4 then x square goes to this so this is minus 2 uh what is that 2 times x squared yeah so either you do entire calculation or you don't need to do entire calculation also but let's let's do the expansion so 2x square this goes to this and then this goes to this what will happen this is 2 times alpha plus beta x cube then then that one will be 2 times oh sorry uh no this will become a longer root actually because you have here you have to multiply this also sorry there will be a lot of terms here so this is another approach but you can you know instead of calculating all of that what you can do is so all the con constants put together you will get the value of alpha beta once right and let us say what are the what is what will be the constant term here in this expansion if i have to find out the constant term that will be 2 times minus 3 times alpha beta is it, it so then that is minus 6 alpha beta this is a constant term if you expand the entire thing you will get 2 times again 2 times this minus 3 and this alpha beta will give you the constant term this is the only constant term you will get so minus 6 into alpha beta and this will be equal to this minus 3 see so alpha beta is equal to half this is what we would have got and and coefficient if i expand this and find out the coefficient of x so what will be the coefficient of x guys simply it is becoming 2 into minus 3 into this item here alpha plus beta do you agree is there any other mechanism by which you will get x there is none yes or no so the coefficient of x x can be obtained how only by 2 into this minus 3 and into this term there is no other way out so i'm giving another way of you can always always divide and simplify that's fine so this will give me coefficient of x is 
how much in this case it is minus 9 so i will get 3 so alpha plus beta is equal to 3 by 2 so alpha plus beta is 3 by 2 and alpha beta is half so i did not divide it actually so did, are you guys getting the same thing so alpha is minus uh yes i think this is what you have also got it minus 1 minus half but then i am getting plus you are getting minus hmm alpha beta is this okay obtain the other zero so you are saying minus half minus 1 and minus half so that means uh, okay 2 into minus 3 into minus alpha so beta. on this side where we cancel the 3 it's minus 3 so we get minus 1 left side no minus 3 and minus 9 that will be 3 no? on the right hand side also we have minus 9 oh okay so i'm sorry hmm so how come alpha beta is coming out to be 3 by 2 so did you check everyone is getting minus 1 and half or 1 and half everyone is getting minus 1 and minus half so where is the error ta 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 x square minus 3 that's fine and x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta is also fine so the coefficient of x is 2 into minus 3 into oh my dear friends yes there is a minus sign here also because this is minus alpha plus beta x so it will be minus 3 thank you so alpha beta is minus 3 by 2 hence the yes thick thanks arun so hence you know this is why what happens if you do a lot of khichdi don't do that okay but yes the formal root which people have done is they have multiplied the factors you get x square minus 3 then divide this entire expression this is what everybody has done this is what everybody has done you have done this way yes or no and hence you have to be very thorough while dividing so 2x square so 2x to the power 4 minus 3 to the 6 Sorry, this is three, no, not three. So three to just six x uh, squared. So yeah, not here. It will be minus six x squared here. Correct. Now subtract. You will get three x cube. Then this is minus five plus six. So x squared minus nine x minus three. Then again, what? Plus three x. So three x cube and minus three three is a nine x, right? So you'll be left with x square minus three. So it will be simply one, and hence gone. Right? So this is two x square plus three x plus one. Then you factorize this. You will get x equals to minus one, x equals to minus one. Good. This one again four marks. Without actually calculating the zeros, form a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are reciprocals of the zeros of the polynomial. This, without actually calculating the zero, Hmm. Take time, two minutes easily, and then do.
Okay, so everybody is getting the same answer. 3x square minus 2x minus 5 upon 3. Without actually calculating the ze uh, zeros, form a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are similar to the previous one. So they have some liking for reciprocal roots. So let's say alpha and beta. Oh, let us say alpha and beta are zeros of 5x square plus 2x minus 3. So my dear friends, alpha plus beta is going to be 2 by 5 minus and alpha beta is going to be minus 3 upon 5. Now, hence, what will happen? Uh, what do you need to find out? So the quadratic polynomial required will be x square minus 1 upon alpha plus 1 upon beta times x plus 1 upon alpha beta. Right? This is nothing but x square minus alpha plus beta by alpha beta x plus 1 upon alpha beta which is nothing but x square minus alpha plus beta is minus 2 upon 5 divided by alpha beta is minus 3 upon 5 times x plus 1 upon alpha beta is minus 3 upon 5 which is equal to x square minus 2 by 3 x minus 5 by 3. Did you all get this part? So this is nothing but 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 by 3, right? Okay, four marks. This is easy, quick. So many questions on sum and product or form a quadratic polynomial. Yes, yes. Uh, Shares. Minus 3 and 2. So sum of root minus 1. Satyam. Sum of root is little. The product of whose zeros are. Achha, the sum and product. Oh, achha, I thought the roots are. Yes, sum of sum is alpha plus beta minus 3 and alpha beta is 2. X square plus 3x plus 2. Cool. Oh, similar. See, similar question is there. Only 3 and minus 3 has become root 3 minus root 3 is root 5 minus root 5. <clears throat> Similar. So divide and find the another quadratic factor, factorize it, get the zeros. Done so quickly. Okay. Okay, so fair enough. Minus half, and so hence 
the polynomial px will be how much so px is equal to x minus root 5 x plus root 5 times let's say qx right which is the quadratic so this is x square minus 5 times qx this is how you can write there also so px is equal to this so what is qx qx is px upon x square minus 5 so let's do this x square minus 5 within brackets open this up 2x to the power 4 minus x cube minus 11x square plus 5x plus 5 and yeah so now 2x squared you'll get 2x squared here 2x to the power 4 then minus 5x squared comes here divide subtract minus x cube and then minus 11 so is minus 6x squared right and then uh, next is what uh, plus 5x plus 5 that's it and then minus x only so minus x cube and plus 5x so plus 5x comes here this goes so this is minus 6x square plus 5 sorry uh, plus 5 ah huh? so i minus 11 minus 5 so there yes how did you get this so oh, everyone got the answer also did i make some mistake x2 2x square 2x4 that's gone x cube minus 5 oh sorry 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 mine oh this is 10 no i that's what i was startled by this that this is not getting cancelled this is correct now yes 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 thanks sorry so i missed that so minus 11 plus 10 so x on the yes so x and now it's okay yes so x square okay now and rest all is okay so 5x comes down plus 5 that's fine and then minus x yeah that's good so this is gone so now what minus 1 minus x square plus 5 0 so this is the quadratic factor qx so qx is equal to 2x square minus x minus 1 which is 2x square minus 2x plus x minus 1 which is 2x common x minus 1 plus 1 x minus 1 so it is x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 so what are the roots or zeros so zeros are x equals to 1 x equals to minus half do okay this one three marks find the value of k such that polynomial x square minus k plus 6x plus 2k minus 1 has sum of its zeros equal to half of their product. Acha, just uh, this thing. Uh, Anish is there? Anish, Anish, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Anish Bharatwaj, Indra Nagar. Yeah, you you asked this question, no? So I was thinking x cube minus 1 actually. So x cube minus 1 is equal to zero, or if you have y is equal to x cube minus 1. so this is where there will be one real and two imaginary roots okay but if it is y is equal to x minus 1 whole cube then it has three equal roots so for to answer shardoli as well so one 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 so it is possible so that time i was uh considering this so cubic can have yes all three equal roots are there cubic can also have three but if this this is this kind of equation is there then in this case so i was assuming this because here the roots are 1 omega omega square so omega and omega square are the complex zero so yeah so hence you can have equal roots for just a correction for the cubic also yes okay yeah guys now go ahead find the value of k such that this is done 7 sum of its zeros equal to half of their product find the value of k such that the polynomial has sum of its zeros equal to half of their product so what is o oh, so you have to first find out alpha plus beta sum of the zeros how much is it k plus 6 okay and alpha beta product of zero is 2 2k minus 1 right 
sum of roots is k plus six, product of roots is two, two k minus. And what is given? Sum of zero is equal to half of their product. So k plus six is equal to half of this will be two k minus one. Right. So k is equal to seven. Okay. Three marks. Not worth it. Anyways, find the zeros of the quadratic uh, polynomial and verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients. Find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial and verify the relationship. Verify the relationship meaning what do you need to do? Sum of roots and product of roots, you have to show that it is minus b by a and c by. Uh, zeros are oh, different, different answers. No, same. Okay. Is it verified? Okay, so px barabar 7y square minus 11 by 3y minus 2 by 3. Everyone did? Did this part? So one way of doing it, this will be you know, uh, take the common denominator. So this will be 21 y square minus 11 y minus 2 upon 3. Now it will be easier. Is it? Bolo. Yep. So hence, you can write this as 21 y square minus 11 y. So 14 3 is 42. So you can write this as 14 y plus 3y minus 2 divided by 3, which is 7y common. And you will have 3y minus 2, OK, plus 1, 3y minus 2 divided by 3, which is equal to 1 upon 3, 3y minus 2, 7y plus 1. Is it? So see the findings you can't we remove the three? No. So px is this much. So px may this three is has to be there. No one upon three. Px px's identity will change if you remove that three. One by three. So px is this much. Correct? No. So now they're asking zero. So zero that y is equal to two upon three. And y is equal to minus one upon seven. Okay, sum of y, sum of zeros, two by three minus one upon seven, which is equal to twenty one, fourteen, and mm, minus three, minus eleven by twenty one. Is it? It is right. So, yeah, you can equate it to zero directly, no problem, right? Because I was doing px, I was writing px like this, so hence I cannot eliminate one by three. If you remove this one by three, then px is different. Then you have a different polynomial altogether with the same zeros. But polynomial can be, uh, I told you, right? There will be a family of polynomials with the same set of zeros. You keep on multiplying with some constant k, you'll get the same, right? 
So, but then different all polynomials will be different, but the zeros of all the all of them will be same. What does it physically mean? So these are the two points where they are cutting. So there could be infinite number of polynomials with the same zeros, same zero, but they are all different polynomials. Okay. Anyways, so uh, minus eleven by twenty one is verified. Why? Because minus b by a is um. Hold on. Sum of zero should be eleven by twenty-one. What's happening? Oh, this side plus one by minus. Huh? So eleven by twenty-one done. And product of product of zeros is how much? Two by three into minus one upon seven. It is minus two upon twenty-one, which is true because c is minus two by three. By a, which is seven, is equal to minus two by twenty-one. Verified. This one. Oh, sorry. Hmm. This was asked in last to last year board paper. X squared, three x squared minus five. Okay, done. So the, see, I am doing in a different way altogether. I'll show you how. If if you are able to understand, so tell me. Okay, and uh, this into this into this into this. Yeah. No, oh, Ochad, this will give you B only. Okay. So, I don't know. Did you understand what I am doing, guys? They go. I express this given polynomial as three x square minus in minus five into some q x, which is x square plus b x plus c. The coefficient one is one here. Why? Because 
this three is anyways present here, here. So hence, if you multiply this and this, you will get this three x to the power four. So hence, this is the expression. So you have to basically find out the k value. Okay, completely divisible. There is no remainder that is. So one equation I am getting is k the constant will be equal to the constant on the right hand side. Constant on the right hand side will be minus five into c. So minus five c. All other terms will have x. So they cannot be constant. The constant term will be only the last term here multiplied by the last term here. So minus five c will be equated to k. Now come to the coefficient of x. What is the coefficient of x here? Fifteen. So I wrote fifteen. Now let us see where do I get coefficient of or x only on the right hand side. So x. Just imagine if you have three x square and you are multiplying. Let me just hide some things. Mm, yeah. So let us say. First, you are multiplying with three x square term. Now, if you multiply it with this three x square term with x square, you will get four, x to the power four. Here, it will get x to the power three. Here, it will get x to the power two. And then minus five x square minus five v x. Here is where you get the x term. So hence, I have written fifteen is equal to minus five v. So you got v is equal to minus three. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is easier. I mean, you know, it will be simpler to find out. From here, so b is equal to minus three. Did you get what did I what did I do? All of you, yes or no? Guys, I don't know whether you you are getting it or not. Hello. So this is this will simplify this. Now let us take the coefficient of x square. What is the coefficient of x square in the left hand side? One. And how can I get x square on the right hand side? So one is three x square multiplied by c. So I can write this as three c, and this minus five multiplied with this x square. So I can write minus five. So this is how I got, right? Three c minus five. Now three. Now from here I can get c. C is equal to six by three two. Right. So I got the. So the moment I got. The moment I got c is equal to two, what will be k minus ten? Anish, sir, can we find roots of three x square minus five? This has to be root of other two, so we can replace x. Do you understand? Uh, root of three x square minus five will be root of f x. Yes. So, Anish, and then you can okay. So you can put yeah under root what five by three in the value and make it zero and find k. You can do that. What Anish is saying is this: He is saying, uh, since three three uh, x square minus five is what root three x minus root five times root three x plus root five. That means two zeros are known. X equals to root five by root three. And uh, x is equal to minus root five by root three are the zeros of f x. So these are zeros of f x. Meaning what? If I substitute this value in f x, I should get f x to be zero. So what he has done probably did you do this part this way? But it might attract some calculation. But anyway, so what he we have done is this. This is what you mean, Anish. Root of five by three whole to the power four minus nine root of five by three whole to the power three plus root of five by three whole to the power two plus fifteen root of five by three plus x plus k is equal to zero and you solve for k. Is this what you are talking about? Yeah. So hence it will be little cumbersome in terms of calculation. Okay, so uh, in exam try to avoid such, and especially when there are radical signs involved. The third method, which most of you would have done, is you would have divided this expression by three x square minus five, and you would have got off got one quadratic expression. I think so, isn't it? That's what you did. Others, how? What was your procedure? So I took this route. Okay, where I just simply wrote a few linear equations, solved for it, and got the value of right. So mostly people would have divided it, and uh, once you divide, then what did you do? Then the in and Anish, then what you can do is, once you get the quadratic, 
no, but then also not. Yes, then Surya, what did you do? Division. Found factors after that. The remainder equated to zero. Ha. Huh. So hence you, whatever is the remainder, finally you, you would have got it. You would have equated it to zero. Correct. And you will get k is equal to. These are the three methods. One method which I have been using so far is division logarithm method. So you quickly get the value of, you know, so without multiplying, dividing and all that. This is Anish's method where he is substituting the one of the zeros and equating it to zero. The entire polynomial to be zero. And third one is divide and put remainder to be equal to zero. Yeah, three methods. Now, uh, there are a few questions left. So, chalo, do one thing and do one more and then we will wrap up the session. Do this. If 2 by 3 and minus 3 are the zeros of the polynomial, then find the values of a and b. This, is the, this should be very, very easy. Three marks. So again, equating the coefficient root, you can adopt. So, Yep. So did you adopt this method or how did you do? So again, constant B here will be equal to A times minus 2 by 3 times 3. So A times minus 2 by 3 times 3. This will be the constant term when you expand it. Oh, B by A, C by A root. Okay. Fair enough. So B is equal to minus 2A. B is equal to minus 2A. Okay. And as far as a, a is, so next is 7x. So 7 is equal to coefficient of x. How do I get x? So ax multiplies by 3. So it becomes 3a. And minus 2 by 3 multiplies with this x. So it becomes minus 2 by 3. Okay. So 3a and minus 2. Or one more a actually. So a is out and x times, huh, so x times three, so a is out and this one times three. So let it be a only. So x, this one times three, so three and minus two by three times, huh? So this is the thing. Seven is equal to three. Huh? I hope this is clear to you. Again, what I'm saying is if you expand this, the coefficients where x is there, so it will be a x into x into 3, sorry, into 3, this a x into 3, plus the other one is this minus 2 by 3 multiplied by this x, and then a is also there, so a into minus 2 by 3 x. These are the two x terms in the right hand side. So coefficient is 3 a common minus 2 by 3. That's what I have written. And that will be equated to the coefficient on the left hand side, 7. So this is 9 minus 2, 7. So 7 is equal to 7 by 3, A. Okay. So A clearly is 3. So what's B? B is minus 2A. Minus 6. This is one method. Another method is sum of root, product of root. So sum of root. 2 by 3 or sum of zeros minus 3 is equal to minus 7 upon a. This would be easier. Adopt this only. So a directly is 3 from here. And then product of root. So 2 by 3 into minus 3 is equal to b by a. Right? So b will be 2a, which is minus, minus 2a, minus 6. Adopt this one. This is better. Fair enough. So mostly again, two questions are left. So you can, this is again similar. So no need to do it once again, same on the same lines. 
obtain all the zeros of this when 2 and minus 2 are two zeros you know what to do again either you equate or you divide you equate the coefficients or you divide by so hence what are the factors here here the factors are x minus 2 x plus 2 that means x square minus 4 so this is the divisor divide this entire polynomial by this you'll get another quadratic expression factorize it and equate to zero you will get the other two roots this is the root for this one here again x square minus 2 will be a factor of this polynomial divide get a quadratic expression and factorize factorize and then find the other zeros this we have done so many times now okay fair enough and this is how it should be written right this is the actual board answers transcript actually so you can see uh, this is of the division algorithm, but this is now out of syllabus. So again, given Px, then Gx, they have written to check if Gx is a factor. So basically they have divided and they have got a remainder not equal to zero. So in such cases, usually you should adopt this, that Px is equal to Gx into Qx plus Rx. So please do this calculation. It will take one more minute to validate whether you have got the correct answer or not. So this algorithm, please keep, keep in mind. But now that it is removed, so I don't think there will be any question related to that. Okay, any doubt now whatsoever? So if I have not taken any doubt previously also. So all those uh, confusions are clear whether a cubic polynomial will have equal roots or not. How many equal roots, not equal roots, real roots, complex roots and all of that is clear, right? Okay, folks, so just to reiterate what I was explaining that time that if you have y is equal to x minus one cube, so this will have three equal roots. All equal roots are unity. Okay, but if you have this expression x cube minus one, then this guy, this particular expression has one real root and two complex roots. That's what I was you know, I was talking about this, assuming this. So that was the thing. So hence there will be three equal roots. Yes. So no denying the fact. In fact, for that matter, any expression y is equal to x minus a to the power n will have n equal roots if that's x equals to a. But if it is x to the power n minus a, if this is the case, then there will be few real, few complex and complex roots will always be in pairs. Okay. Clear, dosto? Bolo. Any doubt or whatever in the previous things also, if anything is there, let me know. You can explain right now. Bolo, any question to be asked here? So polynomial is a big, big, big chapter and at least in sample paper, a huge weightage is there. So there are, you can see the sample paper, what all questions are there, how many marks? This is uh, one mark, three mark, and four. Seven marks are there. So there are seven marks weightage out of 20 in algebra, where linear equation, quadratic equation, as well as sequence and series, and this polynomial. Four topics are there in algebra. This has the highest weightage, or in fact, equal to linear equation. Now, there is no, no distinction made as such that you know, uh, polynomial will have a seven marks weightage. They talk about 20 marks algebra. So you can expect a mix of, you know, weightages. So hence polynomials might have lesser weightage. The AP uh, sequence and series might have more. So in totality, but 20 marks algebra questions will be there. And in all probability, the word problem should be from quadratic equations or linear equations. So hence the five marker mostly will be allotted to those. So you can rest assured that this will not have a five marker question. Yep. Any other, any other question, any other doubt, anything, please tell me. Nothing. Then we will wrap the show up here and uh, let's continue the pace. We will finish it. And then as we have mentioned earlier, we will up the ante. So we will start up, start taking up I have great stuff once we are thoroughly done so that in the month of February, you are relaxed. You don't need to revise anything. You just go write your PT, secure good marks, and then 
stay happy okay see you guys thanks for your time i hope it made some sense to you today bye bye take care <clears throat>